Hello and welcome to another episode of the Organic Adventure Show. I am your host, Cy Rodriguez, and today we're going to talk a little bit about cholesterol. So, most of us know what cholesterol is, or at least we know that we shouldn't have too much of it, or think we shouldn't have too much of it, or if you are of some new schools of thought, you think we need to get as much of it as we possibly can. Whatever way it is that you think about it, uh, cholesterol is necessary for the body to function properly. It helps to build the cell membranes, and it also is involved in the integrity of the cell membranes. It's involved in the creation of multiple hormones. It also forms bile in the liver, which in turn leads to the absorption of all of your fat soluble and vitamins, including A, D, E, and K. And it's a waxy substance that's mainly found in the liver and in the blood plasma of all animals. So what is the deal with cholesterol and how does it work and what are the good and bad points about it? Okay, so there's HDL and LDL, which most people know about. The HDL is the high-density lipoprotein and the LDL are the low-density lipoproteins. So low-density lipoproteins carry cholesterol from the liver where it is primarily synthesized to the cells in the body where they need it through the bloodstream. And once it has done its job, then HDL or high density lipoprotein comes along and cleans up all of the excess cholesterol and takes it back to the liver where it is either remanufactured, which about 50% of it is, or is excreted from the body. So that's where the term good cholesterol and bad cholesterol come from based on the fact that the good cholesterol or HDL is needed in order to clean up the excess cholesterol and bring it back to the liver. So now that we understand the very basics of what those two particular types of cholesterol do, then let's look a little bit more deep into the subject of levels of cholesterol. So you've probably heard that one level of cholesterol should be higher than or higher than the other, or one level of cholesterol is higher than the other, but that there should be a ratio that's good, and that's oftentimes more important than the actual whole number of your cholesterol. So according to the sources that I've looked at, somewhere between 165 to 200 milligrams per deciliter is a normal level of cholesterol overall, and that includes your high density and your low density. Now, normal for your high density is considered to be 50 milligrams per deciliter or higher, and normal for your low density lipoprotein is considered to be 150. 150 milligrams per deciliter or lower. And if you've taken a blood test, you probably have an idea where you're at if you are high or low with those two particulars. Now, when we're looking at ratios, when you look at the total number, that combination of your low and your high density lipoproteins, and you divide that by your HDL, what you're looking at is to get a number that is lower than 3.7. And you can also just divide the LDL by the HDL, and you're looking for a number that's lower than 3. So if you've had your cholesterol levels read and you have your blood test somewhere that shows you, you can find out, if you didn't know already, what your cholesterol ratio is. And that would be more important than the actual number, according to what most people say. Now, if you wanted to reduce your cholesterol levels, there are things you can do, and you can also do th things to raise your good cholesterol. But before we get into that, let's just look at a few of the things that contribute to high cholesterol and what problems occur when your body has too much cholesterol. So too much cholesterol is mostly associated with um, a high risk for heart attack. There was something I forgot before. The reason that the low density lipoprotein is considered the bad cholesterol is because if it's in the blood and if there's not enough 
HDL to go and clean up that excess cholesterol, then the low density lipoprotein gets oxidized. And when it gets oxidized, it causes inflammation inside the artery walls. And then it sticks to those artery walls and accumulates more, which is called plaque and leads to arteriosclerosis. So that's the further explanation of why it can lead to a heart attack or heart disease. So some of the things that contribute to high cholesterol are diets that are high in animal products, diets high in saturated fats, and refined carbohydrates. Insulin resistance also contributes to higher cholesterol le levels. Hypothyroidism is also related to having high cholesterol, and consuming hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated vegetable oils in the form of like margarine or vegetable shortening contributes to raising your overall cholesterol levels and it does this by raising your low density lipoprotein and lowering your HDL lipoprotein so it's like a double bad to eat margarine or other hydrogenated fats so you'd be best off just leaving those alone completely now let's look at a few of the things which can contribute to lowering your overall cholesterol. So exercise in general lowers your overall cholesterol level and you can also do things with your diet like eating a higher fiber diet can balance cholesterol and you can lower your cholesterol levels with either soluble or insoluble fiber. So the fiber found in oatmeal and apple skins actually cleans out your arteries so it's a really good thing to, in, those are really good things to include in your diet. For people with insulin resistance challenges, lowering your simple sugar intake and getting more protein rich foods has been shown to lower your overall cholesterol. And reducing stress levels is also believed to be helpful at lowering your cholesterol. Now if you're concerned about having HDL levels that are too low, there are some things that you can do to raise those levels. One of those things is you can add olive oil into your diet. Garlic and onions have been shown to lower your LDL and raise your HDL. In addition, exercise raises your HDL and lowers your LDL. And getting some niacin in your diet can increase your HDL. And some of the sources that you can get niacin from are avocados, tomatoes, green leafy vegetables, which spirulina and parsley were some of the highest I found. Broccoli, carrots, sweet potatoes, asparagus, cantaloupe, raspberries, nuts, and seeds, of which sesame and sunflower were the highest, and whole grains and beans, and shiitake mushrooms, brewer's yeast, to name some of them. You can also get lots of niacin from animal sources. The question is whether you want to do that or not, so you can decide if that's really beneficial as we talked about before, animal products are one of the things that generally contribute to higher cholesterol levels. Now, a wide variety of colorful fruits and vegetables provide an abundance of antioxidants, which can reduce the oxidation of LDL and lower cholesterol. And some of the herbs that can help that are high in antioxidants are cayenne, rosemary, oregano, and basil. Some things that you want to avoid are sugar and alcohol because they stimulate the liver to produce more cholesterol. And um, excessive consumption of caffeine is also a contributor to um, raising your cholesterol levels. Oh, and before we go any further, one of the things that also contributed to raising your HDL levels was laughing. Um, the study was done on diabetics, but it was about 26% raise in overall HDL levels. So laugh as much as you possibly can. So thank you so much for listening. I hope this information was helpful and you're going to benefit from it. I appreciate you watching and may every day be an adventure in health.